Hello and welcome to Basic Business Statistics, QBA 237. My name is Todd Daniel and I'm going to be your instructor this semester. I want to start off this first video explaining the structure of the course so you'll know a little bit about what to expect as we get rolling. I'm going to give you some best practices and walk you through what you need to know about Blackboard and Cengage, the tools that we'll be using to organize our learning this semester. So let me start with just the basics of the class structure. Our class is scheduled for two days a week. That will either be Monday, Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday, depending upon the semester. Now, I typically teach two sections of the same class, an online section and a blended or partially seated class. When I organize the Blackboard structure, however, in order to simplify the communication, I will combine those two sections, meaning that when you look at the name of your course on Blackboard, you'll see the word combo, C-O-M-B-O, and that indicates that you have been put into a, a larger Blackboard shell for these two classes. Now that simplifies things on my end as far as sending out announcements and being able to post the same material for all students. However, for you, your experience as a student will not differ. Everything that you see would be exactly the same as if you were enrolled in only one Blackboard shell. So nothing for you to need to worry about there. Just wanted you to know what that signature meant when you see combo on the name of your Blackboard. Let's talk about classroom health. We are thankfully to the point where we no longer need to wear masks as students in the classroom or as the instructor. And this is such a welcome change. I know it was important, it was necessary, it was something that we had to do, but wow, it sure is nice to be able to see your faces in a seated class, for you to be able to see me, and I am so glad that we don't have to wear the masks anymore. That said, if you're sick, COVID, cold, anything contagious, go ahead and stay home. Don't come to class and share it with others. Now, if you miss a class, you might wonder, am I going to miss material from that class? And the answer is no. And I'm going to explain more about that in just a minute. If you have to miss a class, there is a wonderful way of making up any material you missed. And of course, if you're in the online section, then that won't matter. You can uh, suffer along at home and just watch the videos online. The syllabus and the schedule are both available on Blackboard. And the best way to find them is to start with a link in the upper left corner of Blackboard that says week zero, start here. When you open that link, it will contain a number of tasks that you need to accomplish before you get started with the course. You'll be doing things like downloading software, making sure your Excel is working as it should. You will even have an opportunity for an extra credit quiz, but it's hidden among all those tasks, so you won't find it unless you work through week zero from the very beginning. The idea here is that if there's going to be any problem with either your system software or getting something installed, it's going to happen now when it doesn't matter, not right before the test happens or even worse, moments before the deadline to complete a test. We're going to get any troubleshooting out of the way early and you get a chance to earn some extra credit points. This is the textbook that we'll be using. It's published by Cengage. There's actually another textbook that is published by the same authors and also published by Cengage, and you will be using both of them. The reason for that is that one version, this blue covered version, is part of the MindTap software in Cengage, and the other is part of the WebAssign software in Cengage. Now, all you need to know about this is that there are two versions of the software that allow me to create assignments and tutorials and so forth. The MindTap is really easy to use, but it doesn't give me enough flexibility because I really like to get in there and design my own assignments. So I also use WebAssign. All you need to know is that when you work through your week zero folder, you will click on two links to get enrolled in each of those two, we'll call them courses to be attached to each of those two textbooks. And both of those links are very clearly marked. They say things like click here to attach the mind tab. 
Both of these textbooks are provided through a Cengage Unlimited subscription, which should be available through the Streamlined program at MSU, meaning that there will be nothing you need to do before class. This will automatically be added to your student account and should be available on the first day of class. I want to tell you a little bit more about the blended versus online structure for the class. And the most important thing to know about this is that I have designed this course with COVID in mind, or really anything that could cause us to have to go fully online for a short time or long term. What I mean is that I've designed lectures, videos, assignments that you can do whether you're in a fully online class or in a blended class, which is partially seated for the lecture and then you do the assignments, the remaining assignments online. However, what this means for you is that this course is designed so that all students have all information. There is nothing you have access to in the online section that you don't also have in the blended section and vice versa. This means that if you ever have to miss a class for any reason, it's not going to be a problem. You will always have access to the material that we covered. If we have a snow day, which we often do in the spring, or if you get sick, or if I get sick, or if there's a quarantine again, or if we have to, you have to travel to your cousin's wedding in Texas, or you just didn't feel good one day. If for any reason you miss a class, you can make up for that class. You can go online for a given week and then right back the next week. So you have maximum flexibility here. I love to have you in class and it's great to talk to a classroom full of students who are eager to learn. However, if you were sick and needed to stay home or for any other reason you had to miss a class, you are always going to have access to the material that you need. And now I want to tell you about the structure of the class right down to the daily and weekly level. So let's take a look at what you can expect over these next 16 weeks. Every week begins on Monday and runs through Sunday at midnight. Day one will be Monday. When we reach Sunday at midnight, that will be the due date for all assignments from that week. Meaning anything that is part of the week one folder will be due at the end of that first week. The course is divided into four blocks of four weeks for a total of 16 weeks in the entire course. Block A comprises weeks one, two, three, and four. When we get to the end of week three, beginning of week four, I'm going to open up test one. Now, test one comes in two parts. The first part is going to be the traditional test that you're used to with multiple choice and true-false questions, testing the theory or the content that we learned about in the class. But because this is a statistics class, we also will have an applied portion where you have a data set to analyze. Now, the way the applied portion is going to work is you will download an answer sheet and a data set. The answer sheet contains all of the information that you need to run a given analysis and it asks you the questions that you're going to want to answer. So you take your data set, you do the techniques that we learned about in class, and then you write your answers down on that answer sheet. Then when you're ready, you open up the applied test and it's only going to take you five or ten minutes to simply transfer those answers into the blanks on that applied test. So the way this is going to work in the big picture is the traditional portion of the test will use the lockdown browser and the applied portion will not, uh, for obvious reasons. Because on the applied portion, I expect you to use additional resources, whereas on the traditional portion, you would not. So no study guides or uh, accessing other websites. It's the typical lockdown, doing it all out of your own brain. All right. So we get to the end of block A, and then we have the due date for everything in block A. Then we move on to block B, which is weeks 5, 6, 7, and 8. And that's where we encounter the first hard deadline. It's always one week 
after the end of the previous block. So this course is designed to work kind of like the real world does with deadlines. I've run up against uh, due dates where uh, I need to get this in by close of business on Friday. And yet, you know, on Thursday morning, I look at it and I think, if you guys are getting me through the weekend, I think I can really get you something good by Sunday night. You'll have it by Monday morning. It's going to be all the same. And I will do that with some clients. On the other hand, if you do that too much, if you go too long, eventually that window just slams shut. That's what the hard deadline is. If you have not completed any assignments from block A, if there's something that's left undone, if you want to give yourself a little more time to work on that test, that is perfectly fine. But be sure that you get it done by that hard deadline. Because once that deadline comes, the window closes, everything prior to that deadline is graded. If it's incomplete, it's graded as a zero. That's the one that you have to be aware of. So my advice would be to start early, work ahead, give yourself some slack. If you find it's Sunday night and you're just too tired, that's all right. Get some rest, finish it up on Monday morning. However, be aware that you don't want to let that lag too far behind or try to do everything at the very end because there's just simply too much to learn to try to fit it all in that very last minute. So here's the overall structure. We have block A, which is weeks one, two, three, and four. It includes test one, which is in two parts. Then we get to block B. The hard deadline for block A is after week five or one week after the end of block A. Block C has a hard deadline after week nine for block B. And when we get to block D, the hard deadline for the previous block is after week 13. At this point, we are getting into finals week. And so you will be doing three tests. The first will be test four. And that will be just like all the previous tests, one part being theory, the second part being applied. And it grow, goes into detail about everything in block D. However, because we're in finals week, you will also have a comprehensive final. However, the comprehensive final is only going to cover blocks A, B, and C. Therefore, during finals week, you could be working on test four in its two portions and the comprehensive final. However, you can work on these tests a little early and get them knocked out so you don't have to take it all the way through finals week. They're going to open at the end of week 15, the beginning of week 16, meaning that you can complete these tests before you get all the way through finals week, yeah, and then you can spend more time working on other finals. What I want you to see is the test, or rather the class, is built for maximum flexibility. I want to give you the option of what works best for you in getting the materials done. However, there are some hard deadlines to be aware of and you have to be on top of your game when it comes to time management and not let things slip behind schedule. At the end of finals week, we have our final deadline. That is always the Thursday of finals week. And Friday morning, I will come into my office early. I'm going to download all of the scores, get my grading done right away. I try to get it done before noon on Friday, and then I'm on vacation. So I'm going to make sure you have maximum flexibility, but you can count on me to be getting things done at the earliest possible time so I don't let things lag. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about Cengage and Blackboard and how those two are going to work together. Here's the thing that you need to know about Cengage. It is this massive publishing house that has, I don't know, hundreds of textbooks available and lots, lots, lots of resources available. Assignments and tutorials. It's this huge database. Now, thankfully, we're not going to use all of that in our course. I select the parts from the Cengage massive database that we're going to use. But here's where that can get just a little bit tricky. If you're working in Blackboard, you will only see the assignments for our course. 
But if you look in the Cengage gradebook, you will see other assignments that say things like counts toward grade. Well, that's true in the sense that I could select those and they're graded and they could be put into Blackboard. But know that those Cengage counts toward grade, that's not part of our class. That's just a note to me that I could use those as a graded assignment. Therefore, you should work in Blackboard and pay attention to the grade book and the assignments that you find in our Blackboard shell. You can ignore assignments that say count toward grade in Cengage if they have not been linked to through our Blackboard course. Only the assignments that you reach from our Blackboard course will count as graded assignments in our course. So let me offer you some best practices to make sure that you can maximize your grade in this course. Number one, start early. If it's before the class has started or it's still the first week of class, get on that week zero start here folder, work through all of those tasks, make sure you have software installed, everything is working, make sure you find that extra credit assignment, get that done first. Simple enough to do, may only take you just a few minutes just to get that part out of the way. Now you know you're set, you're ready, you have what you need for the rest of the course. Then jump into week one. Open up the week one folder, start at the very top, you will see an announcement. You will see uh, an explanation of what we're gonna be covering in week one. If it's an explanation or something written, read it. Below that, you will find course notes and a PDF of the PowerPoint slides that I use in every lecture. So again, this is available whether you're seated or online. I would suggest downloading both. You can print out the notes if you prefer to do that and you could take additional notes on that. You could open up that PDF on your iPad or tablet or maybe on your computer and take notes directly in the PDF. Uh, you could print it, it's entirely up to you. The PowerPoint, I recommend not printing, just scroll through that. You will also encounter videos. What I would suggest is watch the video, listen along, follow in the notes, look at the PowerPoint if you'd like to, uh, have that information. You'll see that the videos are broken down into relatively small chunks. I try to keep them less than 10 minutes. Some are super short, uh, three minutes long. But what this will allow you to do is take in that information in short little chunks. Uh, if you have uh, an hour to work, you can knock out several of them. But even if you only have 10 or 15 minutes, you can do a little bit at a time. Follow through. Start at the top of that uh, week one folder. Just work your way down to the bottom. At the bottom of every week folder, you will find the assignment for that week. Once you have completed the assignment for that week, then you're done for that week and you are free to move on to the next week. So I would recommend start early, work ahead, and use the structure that you find in Blackboard to organize your learning. Let me say one more thing about the email. You are welcome to email me. The contact information is in our course. However, when you email, please include something that helps me know who you are. Typically, if you can tell me whether you were enrolled in 237, which is basic business statistics, or 337, which is applied business statistics, then I will be able to find you really easily. So occasionally I get an email that says, you know, hi, this is Jimmy from your class, and I had a question about the assignment for this week. That's difficult to find. But if you say, hi, uh, first and last name, uh, I'm enrolled in 237 or I'm a rule of 337 and a question about the assignment for week three, I can find the answer to that very, very quickly. Typically what happens is I answer those emails first because they're the low hanging fruit and easy to get done with. Then I've got to circle back and work on the ones that require more effort to find the answer. Basically, the more information you can give me up front, the quicker and easier I'm going to be able to respond to your question. And there you go. That is what you need to know to get started with this class. I hope that you find that the structure of the class is easy to follow. You'll probably figure out that uh, you have a little bit of OCD when it comes to organization and structure, which I think is gonna to work to your benefit. 
Everything is there for a reason. Don't skip assignments because they look like they're not graded. If I put it in there, it's because it's gonna teach you a skill that you'll need for one of the graded assignments. Honestly, just work from top to bottom through each one of those weekly folders. I think you're gonna have no trouble staying on track. I wish you the best and welcome to class.